you after church, but I think the Lord's telling me to, to, to tell everybody. When I was in your class here, either last year or the year before, you made a statement. When Jesus came, when John baptized Jesus and he came up out of the water and the Holy Ghost descended on him and lit him up. And then the Holy Ghost led him out in the desert for 40 days to be tested by the devil. Well, I came across that today, Matthew 4. And I'm writing down all the, the blood and the spiritual walk that Jesus wants us to walk, that he walked, and the blood of Jesus of all the different verses. And I came across where John baptized him. And it made me think a little bit. All of us are out in the desert at one time in our life. And we have no water, no food, and we're being parched. In the sea of sin, there's no life. <laughs> so I'm sitting there reading this, and then all of a sudden, I got a revelation. And it only came from one of three people, <laughs> one of two people, one of all people. When Jesus went out to be tested in the desert, he came back out of that desert and he was hungry. What was he hungry for? That's the question you asked in one of your classes, Brother Rose. Guess what he was hungry for? He was hungry for the word of the Father. He was thirsty for the righteousness of the Father. He was dry and parched. The devil didn't destroy him. Didn't beat him. Wore him out. And he wanted the Father's words. And we all go through this at one time in our life. We go through where... <laughs> We're, we're dry. We're parched. Yes. We need the living water. Yes. Amen. A while ago here, this happened to me a few years ago. I had a vision. Brother Dean, I hope and pray that you get that someday. I've had many of them. But I'm here to tell you, even though I had all them, I ran. Brother Timothy, I got your message here too. I ran too. Yes. Only I ran for 44 years. Yes. That's what I did. But when I got this last night, yes. it opened my eyes to a lot. I'm sitting in my car one day and I had another experience. My wife was in the house. She's cleaning house. I'm sitting out in the car reading my Bible. Now, I don't help her clean house because I feel uncomfortable going to other people's houses that I don't know. <clears throat> All right? So I'm sitting there reading the Bible, and I had another experience. I left, got out of my car, went between both these houses, and all of a sudden, the Lord says, wash your hands in the tree of life. Brothers and sisters, we need to wash our hands in the tree of life for real. Out here right now, this is all desert. Every bit of it's desert. We're walking in a desert. I watched TV yesterday and a, and a couple days ago on the History Channel. They come out with this thing now where Jesus was not of a virgin Mary. That the Bible has human fingerprints all over it. Well, yeah, it does. It has fuming fingerprints all over it, but it was inspired by God. It was God's words. We've got to understand that. Don't let these people turn around and say that the Bible's not real. Jesus is real. I've had so many encounters with him, I can't count them no more. Amen. Now, I've had people tell me, well, those were just for you. Well, I thank God they were for me because they chased he chased me for 40-some years. So I'm glad he did catch me. 
But what I'm saying is for everybody. Yeah. We all come to the point in our life where we need a drink. Yeah. And he says, when he, what did he say to the girl that came to the well? Thirsty. Hello. Look around you. Don't be afraid to speak up about Jesus. Don't be afraid to talk to anybody. We need this. We need it bad. We're getting close. We're getting so close, <coughs> you can almost smell the sweet aroma from Jesus' breath. And I praise God, and I praise Jesus, and I thank the Holy Spirit that he chased me for that many years and got me three years ago. Now, I'm still, you know, slippery slide, and everybody does. But see, the, the old adage is this, if you fall off the wagon, get back on it. Don't let the wagon trample you and put you under, because there's nobody out there that's going to help you but him. Not the, the people who don't believe in him, not the people that scoff at him, they're not going to put their hands out. Only the God-fearing people are going to stretch out their hands to help you. No one else is going to help you. People are selfish. They're greedy. And it's going to come on them one day. It's going to hit them like a bolt of lightning. God bless us.